Living in flow. You hear about this all the time. He was in a flow state, she was in the zone. Everyone is trying to hit a flow state or they're always talking about it anyways, at least to me. But what does this actually mean? And how does one enter this flow state? And how do I know if I'm actually in it or not? I'm Stephanie Postles, CEO of Mission.org and the host of this show, Mission Daily. Every episode, I uncover one key skill to upgrade your mind, your body, and your spirit so that you can be the best business leader and tap into a new level of leadership. For those who don't know me, I am obsessed with learning how I can optimize my life so I can build better businesses, stronger teams, and show up more fully for my friends, my family, and my community. And that's why I'm digging into this concept of flow today. And I'm gonna share with you what it means, how it works, and my three takeaways for how I apply it when thinking about running my company and navigating my life. So to start, what is a flow state? Well, thanks to good old Wikipedia, we have a great definition here that I can pull from. So a flow state, it's when someone's performing an activity and they're fully immersed in a feeling of energized focus, full involvement in that activity, enjoyment in the process of the activity, in essence, flow is characterized by the complete absorption in what you are doing. Flow is really all about the melting together of action and consciousness, which for anyone who knows me, I'm like, oh, that sounds pretty good. Okay, I like that action and consciousness coming together. So when thinking about flow, though, we usually hear it, like I mentioned earlier, when it comes to people playing sports, you know, someone out on the court, artists, people up on stage, someone doing a presentation, giving a big lecture, you know, or a, a, big, uh, a big talk. And people watching them and being like, whoa, they're so tapped in. They're so in flow. They're just in the zone. It's like they're channeling this message. They're channeling that talent. Like, how do they do it? And that obviously sounds awesome. I'm here for it. But when I think about being in flow, I actually define flow a bit differently than how Wikipedia and probably the general public and the books that are written about it, instead of aiming to be in a moment of flow or looking to seek that or try to copy that, instead I think about flow as this like co-collaboration with life. All of life's experiences, I am in collaboration with those experiences, which to me means being in flow throughout your life. And yes, can you tap into moments of extreme flow where you're just loving what you're doing so much? You're like, I just, spent six hours doing something and where'd that time go? It was so amazing. I've never done that before, of course. I definitely think you can tap into those moments, but I like to think about flow more about how can I be in this state throughout my life? Instead of trying to hit a peak moment and trying to get somewhere all the time, how can I have my life be in flow in a way that's collaborating with all the experiences that are happening and circling around me? Now, when thinking about being in flow with the universe, which definitely, of course, sounds a little, woo, okay, be in flow with the universe, yes, but to me, it actually means not resisting the hard experiences that are coming up. Because a lot of those hard experiences, at least in my life, when I look back and I look at the things that even are occurring right now, what I know now, and I wish I knew a long time ago, was that all of these experiences are building towards something. And they might even just be building towards that flow state that is coming, that I see on the, in the future, I know I'm heading there, and every experience that I'm going through, that you're going through, is all super necessary to build up the life experiences, the lessons, the you know nervous system work that's happening, like everything that's happening, it's meant to happen that way to then possibly be able to experience that thing in flow. So what I mean by this is that when you see that person that everyone you know is pointing to as if they're in flow, that famous person, that you know football player, whoever it might be, you see that end result of like, yes, they definitely were in that game, they were in the zone for sure. But what I think people forget is all the practice and experiences that went into that before that one game, before that even happened. And you need all those. You need those crunchy moments. And practicing is not always fun. Like if you talk to those players, you talk to these artists, you talk to anyone who looks really good in that end result, they will also tell you, probably just like myself or anyone else who is trying something new, who's getting into a new experience, who's heading into a whole new part of life or new projects or new companies, that time of building up to that is not fun. Like I guarantee you those people who are in these flow states, they are not in flow while they're practicing learning how to play a different you know, guitar song, while they're practicing a new football move, not that I know football, but 
I guarantee that they're not just living their life, having the most fun all the time, just constantly in flow. And yet they probably know that that is what it takes to get to the game, to then experience that. And so that to me is something where I think about it more of like, how can I view those crunchy moments, learning this new thing, something that feels like it's gonna break me, I'm pushing for change, it's not fun. How can I actually view that as part of the flow of life where I get to co-create and collaborate with the universe and life and everything that's happening to get to that new thing that I'm working towards, to learn that new hobby, to start that new project, to be in that different kind of a relationship. I need all those moments. And so that's where I think I like to shift the focus away from how do I get in my flow state right now to how can I view all these experiences and work with them in a way that feels in flow all throughout my life. And I think about this as an interesting visual, a chart that I think I've even drawn this out before, where if you're resisting an experience that's happening, let's just say that, we'll take my experience, lawsuits are coming at you, allegations are coming at you, and you're like, what do I do? You can resist, you can meet it with so much anger and anxiety and just get engulfed in it, you can become the problem, and then what it looks like is you've got life like this and then you've got me going the other way. And every time it goes up, you're going down. It goes down, you're going up and you're just doing a lot to resist that experience. It's in completely engulfing you and it's probably not helping by putting up that much, much resistance to it. Versus an event happens that feels tough and how can you see it for what it is, zoom out, know the bigger picture to, okay, well, I'm, I am heading to this this new experience in life. I am pushing the boundaries of my reality. I'm pushing outside of the scope of where I've ever been before. So I'm literally expanding my horizons. So it makes sense that this thing would pop up right now, this little element of resistance with a capital R. It makes sense this is happening. Let me zoom out and actually just be in the moment with this, look at it for what it is and go with the flow and not get so wrapped up in something that you can either let this shake your whole life, you can be a victim to this one thing, this one scenario, you can let others do things to you, I'm putting to you in quotes, that then completely is taking away your power, as in now all these circumstances are controlling your life and it just becomes like a little chaotic rock all around the universe, just bing, 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 while life is actually moving slowly and steadily with a plan to get you where you need to go. So if there's a bigger plan that exists and you can view these moments in life for what they are, how can you align yourself with those moments and go through them with grace and ease instead of resisting and thinking, this isn't part of the plan. I'm supposed to be in flow right now. I'm supposed to be feeling good and in bliss. So, so now that I've positioned thinking about being in flow in a little bit different of a way than probably how most other People think about it, how they're striving to get to that one moment. They just wanna be in flow for an hour while they're working on their emails or they're working on their thing. I'm more thinking of it as yes and how do I create a life and bring emotions to my life and my experiences in a way that gets me to these flow states, but in a way that's also through collaborating with life in a loving and less resistant way of journeying through the world. So. How does a flow state actually work? This is one thing that I'm, I always am curious about whenever I'm talking about these things because oftentimes things that make sense for me are more of just like, yes, this makes sense. My intuition says it makes sense. How I see things popping up in my life makes sense. I look back and I see a lot of times in my life when I was resisting and where the same scenario a couple years ago that rocked me, that shook me to my core, that made me go into depressive states that really took me down, fast forward to today and that could never happen. It's just a very different place that I'm in. So I've seen what it looks like to resist and to aim for this big shiny thing on the hilltop and have expectations of, I need to be in this kind of state when I'm working, when I'm talking to clients, when I'm you know writing up my emails, when I'm creating a new script and I'm, I need to be heads down. That way feels very forceful. It feels like a very uh, masculine approach to life of like, I gotta force this thing right now to be exactly where I need to be. Uh, and that felt harder for me personally. When I look back and that's the way I was 
doing things. It was much more from my mind that was driving the actions, which I think is most people. Most people use their mind to drive exactly what's happening in their world. And I need to do this, 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 and this. Versus getting out of that, getting into the body, using the heart to make decisions, using the body to then decide your yeses and nos and learning how do I know when my body's a full yes on something? How do I know when it's telling me, no, don't do this. Don't agree to that. Don't sign that contract. Don't work with that person. I've learned more to get more into the body, my heart, my intuition, and listening to that. Because to me, that's a much more masterful way of making decisions than just relying on my brain and my head. So with that, I do want to go into how does a flow state work? Because y'all know I love diving into science and looking behind the scenes of like, what does this actually mean? How, you know, how could this even happen? What's the science show? And thankfully, because of modern neuroscience these days, we actually do have a pretty good understanding of what happens when people do tap into this flow state, like an intense flow state. It's been monitored, there's been brain scans. So people are, so scientists now can actually see what's happening with the science in the brain and there, of course, I will caveat, there's probably so many other things that are happening in your body when you are going through life in flow versus out of flow, when you're in a very flow specific moment where you're like, whoo, like I said earlier, I just spent three hours writing something and I didn't even look up. I was so engulfed in it. There's things happening not only in your brain, but also all throughout your body, things that we probably can't even measure yet. But for now, what I found really interesting of how a flow state works, these flow states are really all about these interactions that are happening between these five neurotransmitters within the human brain, of course. So that first one is all about dopamine. When you enter into this flow state, dopamine starts to flood your brain. It increases your attention, it increases your ability to take in information, to recognize patterns. So it's essentially this like skill booster where you're able to remember things, uh, create patterns in your brain, which is super necessary with remembering things um, and recalling them later on. So you've got all this dopamine flooding in as step one. The next neurotransmitter that it taps into is the neuroepinephrine. This is essentially speeding up your heart rate, your muscle tension, your respiration. And it's also triggering this like glucose response. So you have more energy, more arousal, more attention, more efficiency. So it's kind of like producing this essentially a high while you're working. So then go to the third one, you've got endorphins happening. So the root word for the word endorphins is endogenous, meaning naturally in the body, you are creating these endorphins. It's not from outside. It's not from taking, you know, a, a pain reliever or anything like that. Like all of this is happening in your body and it's inducing this pleasure, it's reducing pain. And so you've got that flowing in as a third thing. All right, then next up, it taps into the anandamide, which is actually a Sanskrit word for bliss. So this is something that is oftentimes released in exercise induced flow states. It's gonna elevate your mood, it's gonna dilate blood vessels, it's gonna aid in respiration. And it actually has a similar feeling to cannabis, like what's found in marijuana, the cannabinoid, that is also what this feeling is. Even though I do not smoke cannabis, I thought this was a helpful thing to compare it to because I'm sure most people have at least tried it and they probably know that feeling. And just when trying to identify, am I in a flow state? How's that feeling? Knowing these different neurotransmitters that it's tapping into and what effects it's gonna have on the body, is kind of helpful to know like, am I in it, am I not? And then also auditing life in general like how do i feel right now do i feel any of these things or do i feel totally out of flow where i don't feel any of them it's a good thing to check in on last but not least you've got serotonin which we've all heard about at the end of a flow state serotonin is essentially filling your brain it's producing this like afterglow effect and it leaves you with this feeling of bliss like damn i just did a good job wow <laughs> so this is when it's only felt after the flow state has come and gone and so if you don't feel this blissful state after you were just in the alleged flow state, or uh, if you're constantly staying in it in this in some way throughout your entire life, you should feel this blissful state of like, wow, what was that? Like, I'm really proud of this thing. I feel really good. I feel like I've got this afterglow after working really hard in a very present and excited way. And how can I tap into these things 
throughout my day-to-day -day life. So I'm gonna keep wrapping it back down to how do we pull this into day-to-day -day life instead of just going after that one moment. All right, so the one thing that we have also been asked that I've had in conversations with friends before is how, if I want to, how do I get into a deep flow state or how do I get into a flow state for life? So the first question that I always ask myself when thinking about this is, is the direction I'm going bringing me the highest excitement? Where am I heading? And is it one that I feel like it's a, it is a full body yes to? I'm literally being pulled towards the thing. When I think about it, my body is actually kind of thrusting forward. It's moving forward. It's such a yes that now I can tune into like what my body's telling me and like, is the direction I'm heading something that brings me the highest excitement? So I, that's something that I'm constantly checking in on because I think it's very easy to be going down a direction and get caught up in that direction because of history, because you've been doing it for a while. I know I saw this with myself when I was going down the finance path. I had a finance degree. I didn't wanna waste this degree that I paid so much money for. And I started out in finance and it took me quite a few years to check in and be like, wait, does this bring me the highest amount of excitement? Do I actually feel like it's a yes, working in this space, is this the path I wanna go down? And the answer was actually no, like this isn't bringing me as much joy as I thought it was. And maybe a couple of years before that, I would have said yes, but when I checked back in, the answer was no. And so when thinking about, is my life in flow? How do I get to these flow states? That's always the first question, where am I heading? Am I intentionally heading somewhere that I'm excited about? And if not, I need to stop and pivot and figure out where should I, where should I move into? Like, what thing do I wanna work on? What space do I wanna be in? And this is, I think, one of the most important things because if you're not excited about where you're going, I don't think you can ever get into a flow state around that. I mean, I think about myself, once again, if I were to tell myself, okay, Steph, you have to get into a flow state right now while you're making a PL. It's a billion dollars, it's a big important job and you need to get into a flow state right this minute so that you can finish this budget, you can finish balancing the books, you can finish blah, 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 like time for you to get in that flow state and do some deep work. Because my joy is not there, my excitement's not there, for myself personally, it would be really, really difficult to get into that state on demand. So I don't think it's about just getting into the state. It's about all the things that are done before then. It's about all the little decisions. It's about checking in with yourself along the way as you're heading somewhere, as you're building out that company, you're launching that new product, you're doing whatever you're doing. It's the little check-ins happening throughout to make sure, is this still exciting to me? And is this where I wanna go? And after you've checked in and you know, okay, this is the path I wanna head to. I am really excited about it. My body's a full yes, my head's a full yes. Everything's a yes, I'm heading there. The next thing I would say is have grace for yourself. Knowing that to get to a flow state and to get your life into a constant state of flow, it's gonna take practice. It's gonna take life experiences. It's gonna take life lessons. It's gonna take crunchy moments. It's gonna take what the fuck kind of moments. Like all of that is meant to be there, especially when you're pushing those boundaries to get into a new space. And so, Step one, check your direction. Step two, have grace for yourself and your journey and know that that journey is leading you exactly where you need to go and every little thing that's happening along the way is probably for your highest good. There is a bigger plan happening. There's a reason these things are being experienced. Um, yeah, and just having grace with yourself along the way. Step three is not resisting. <laughs> so having grace for yourself is awesome and then also not resisting experiences and seeing how can I more be in collaboration with life and be in collaboration with these experiences and truly lean into them and zoom out and not be engulfed by them and be able to see the bigger picture of how it might in some way just be supporting my life's path. They might just some way be getting me to the place I wanna go, I just don't understand the plan, which is great because what I have heard from a great mentor before is if you have a vision and you have a plan, then that's not a vision. A vision is when you're heading somewhere and you don't have the plan yet. You don't know the how. You don't know what am I gonna do? To, like, you don't know how you're gonna get there. You don't know who's gonna help you. You don't know how to build the systems. You don't have the business plan exactly, but you know what that vision is. And it's so big and hairy and audacious. And you're like, oh, 
people ask you like, well, how are you gonna do it? I don't know. I'm not sure how I'm gonna do it, but I do know that I've got this vision of what I wanna do and I will get there. And the how will show up, the plan will show up. And so having that vision and not needing to know all the details, not needing to know all the experiences that are gonna come to get you there, but being okay with the process and knowing I've got this big vision, I know where I'm heading, so anything that comes during this path is probably just part of a plan that I can't see, and that's okay. And the last and final thing I will say that I tap into often that I'm getting even more and more deeper into this world and this space because it feels like it's unlocking so many different codes and pathways that I never could see before is really tapping into the power of breath. So really learning to work with breath in new ways, in ways that if you would have asked me this a couple years ago, I would have been like, I'm already breathing. I breathe every day. Why is this so important? But the more that I dive into what it really can do for your body and your brain and everything that we're up to in this world, the more that I'm interested in it. And so I know in a previous episode, I did talk about uh, the chakra clearing that I did, that a lot of it was about activating breath all throughout your body and how to activate breath into specific chakras and how to see if there's any energy that's not flowing in certain places and then how to bring emotions to that breath and how to bring experiences to that. And I will leave you with one of my favorite new things that I've been tapping into that I think has been super powerful. So it is this same kind of chakra breathing where you're breathing from the ground up, up above you, and then back down into the earth. So it's this very like grounding breath. And how I do it is if there's a moment that's feeling crunchy or hard, or I'm like, why the heck is this happening? Like, I don't see the bigger picture. First I stop and I think, okay, where do I actually feel this in my body? Where is it showing up right now? Is it my chest? Is it my stomach? Is it my shoulders? Like what part is it really activating in me? Because your body doesn't lie. If you stop and listen to it, you will feel where might this be showing up? And if you can't feel that, fine, just assume maybe it's your whole body, let's just go with that. But for me, oftentimes it's a specific area that I feel like this one thing, let's say an employee just, you know, did something that really made me mad or who knows, like someone just backstabbed me and I'm like, what the heck, why'd you do that? So checking in, where is this in my body? And then from there, using breath to go up and down, let's call it your whole channel, like the channel of your body, and stopping in every chakra as you're breathing up and down. So you're going all the way down to your root chakra, you're going up to your stomach, you're going up to your chest, your throat, right between your eyes, above your head, and all the way up. And in doing this, you can loop in the part that is hurting on your body because of that experience. I will say, don't bring a story to the experience. You don't need a story. Your body knows more than the story that you're gonna make up around it. So you don't even have to be like, it's because of this and this and that, and then my mom said this. No, you don't even need to do that. It's literally just feeling into it, it's my shoulder. Okay, I wanna pull my shoulder into this breath, into this channel of breath that's going up and down. And then the final thing I'll do while I'm getting into this flow, which is, you know, it's a little tricky learning how to breathe up and down like this and visualizing it, which you can totally check out YouTube videos on different chakra breathing. So you're breathing in and out, thinking about looping in, you know, the part on your body that just feels tense or hurts or whatever. And then bring in something that makes you happy, a very loving experience. For me, I just think about my kids' faces and I'm like, there's no way I can be mad when I think about my sweet little boys and their sweet, silly little faces. So bring in that feeling of love as you're breathing, as you're pulling your body into this chakra breathing, breathing in the feeling of love and really getting into it with that emotion and bringing it to the experience. This to me was such a big game changer. It, I find it that I cannot stay in a crunchy experience where I'm like, wow, wow, why is this happening? I can't stay in it when I get into this present state. I sit still, I quiet my mind, and then I start using this kind of breathing while bringing in the element of a loving experience. Think about your, your wife, your husband, your parents, something amazing that happened at work where you're like, oh my gosh, something amazing that happened in your community, whatever it is. Bringing that feeling and the emotion into the breathing is the best way to counteract any of these bumpy moments that might make you think that you're off your path. You're not on track. You're, you don't even know how this is any bit relevant. So working with breath, 
working with emotions and then bringing in, you know, the highest frequency feeling, which is love. Like, what is that going to do when you sit and you calm your mind and you breathe deeply and then you bring in an experience of love to that emotion? Try it out. I would love to know what you all think about this episode on being in flow with life, co-collaborating with life, cooperating with all of its experiences and not resisting. So let me know what you think. Send us a message at infoadmission.org or if you want to see my face more, go over to Instagram, Stephanie Postles on Instagram. I also have a TikTok channel that I'm working on growing. Go check that one out. And I would love to hear more from you all. So until next time, be in flow. See y'all next time.